Hi, this is Danny Vieira from Modern Man and Ministries. I made a YouTube video called Jesuits in the SDA Church that has over 112,000 views as of today. And I've been thinking about a sequel to that video, and so I invited my good friend and pastor, Bill Hughes from Truth Triumphant, to join me today as we talk about this subject. Bill is the author of Enemy at the Gate, also The Secret Terrorists, and Bill, you've done a lot to expose the Jesuits to the world. So I just want to ask today as we sit and talk about how you feel that the, Jesuit has an, the Jesuits have an agenda and are targeting our beloved church. And so, Bill, why don't you share a little bit about your feelings in regards to that topic? Danny, it, I would look at it primarily as if a mortal enemy were attacking the Seventh-day Adventist church, they would attack our beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so I look, Danny, and I say the, the very heart of Seventh-day Adventism to me is the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So when I look, Danny, at the attacks that have been made on the writings of Ellen White over the last mm -hmm. 50 years, I look at that, Danny, and I say, well, where is that coming from? And Ellen White herself talked about the enemy of souls seeking to make of none effect mm -hmm. the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. And she talked about how those who would come under Satan's banner would first give up their faith in the testimonies right. of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So, Danny, I look at the attacks on the spirit of prophecy coming directly from the Jesuit order and the mm -hmm. Catholic Church because they recognize that without those eyes, Seventh-day Adventism is a blind, they're a blind people. Mm -hmm. And so that would be the first mm -hmm. place, Danny, where the Jesuits would attack. And we've seen that. You know, I addressed in the first video that Satan's chief work would be at the headquarters of our faith, is what you're saying. If I was the enemy, that's where I would attack. If this is the remnant church of Bible prophecy, and they have the truth, and they've been given the commandments of God and the special gift of the spirit of prophecy. This is where, if I were the devil, I would attack. And we have seen in that first video, Leroy Froome, Roy Allen Anderson, and the, the book, Questions on Doctrines. Mm -hmm. And Bill, I want to ask you, you know, I've been to a number of presentations, heard a number of people speak in regards to spiritual formation. You know, will you comment on that? Because that definitely, definitely um, spiritual formation to me are related to the spiritual exercises of Ignatius Loyola. You know, Danny, Lewis Walton, who came out with the book Omega, yes. Omega 2, Church at the Brink, he mentions, Danny, in that book, he quotes Malachi Martin, where Malachi Martin said that the spirit, modern day spiritual formation is simply a updated version of mm -hmm. the spiritual exercises. Mm -hmm. And he said anybody who uh, takes and studies the spiritual exercises or spiritual formation, the ultimate goal in that, Danny, is to make people obedient servants of the Pope. Mm -hmm. Now, Danny, in 2001, that's 14 years ago, there was a a special board that was set up by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, 2001. In fact, it's mentioned mm -hmm. in the Adventist News uh, paper, I have that here, where they decided, Danny, here it is, Adventist News Network, February 3rd, 2004. They said this, the Adventist World Church created the International Board of Ministerial and Theological Education in September of 2001. Now listen to what it was designed to do. To provide overall guidance and standards to the professional training of pastors, evangelists, theologians, teachers, chaplains, and other denominational employees involved in ministerial and religious formation or spiritual formation mm -hmm. 
in each of the church's 13 regions around the world. Danny, that's from the Adventist News Network, February 3rd, 2004. Mm -hmm. So in 2001, Danny, this board of the Seventh-day Adventist Church decided to teach spiritual formation mm -hmm. to all the leaders in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yeah, I've heard this commented on. You know, I've, I've heard the arguments that we didn't intend for this to go the direction it is today with those words, spiritual formation. But you've made a good argument there, Bill. You know, what I want to say is, you know, I came into this Advent message, mm -hmm. and it was about 1989, I would say. I fell in love with this message. Amen. I heard these messages <laughs> exposing Roman Catholicism, you know, the Pope of Rome, going into Daniel 7, Revelation 13, all these beautiful messages on prophecy. I fell in love with this message in this church and the Sabbath and what it stood for. Amen. But I have seen such a transformation in this church today. I mean, we're seeing everything. I mean, we held to no jewelry in the church. Now you're seeing jewelry coming on to people. You're, the, the clothes that are being worn, the music that's come in today, the dietary change, you know. There's so many different things. The message is watered down. You don't hear Revelation seminars exposing so clearly. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Catholic Church anymore, you know, the mid Church of the Medieval Times, the Church of Rome, you know, it's kind of watered down. And you're not hearing mm. this anymore. And, you know, not everybody knows this story about me. But years ago, I did a billboard campaign. And I put up billboards along with other people that were with us in the ministry at that time. Doctors, you know, professional people, they were funding this campaign. Why did you put it up, Dan? <clears throat> I'm, I'm real curious. Why did you put those billboards up? <clears throat> because in my heart, I wanted to proclaim the three angels' messages. And the world needed to know who, who that beast was, who that little horn power was, mm -hmm. who is going to enforce <clears throat> this, this mark of the beast, who's enforcing Sunday worship, you know, who persecuted the saints. You know, I felt that I needed to to expose, as it says, the man of sin shall be revealed. That was the title of the first billboard. Mm -hmm. So we started a billboard campaign, and it was a, it was a Bible study. With, with We would put up one, one month, the man of sin would be revealed. The second month, all the world wondered after the dot, 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 and we'd give them references in Daniel and Revelation. Then I put the dragon gave him his power, seat, and great authority. So it was a progressive Bible study on billboards that was going down California. You know, mm -hmm. one was outside Dodger Stadium. So you know what happened, Bill? We put up the last one, said Saturday, the Sabbath of the Lord, Sunday, the mark of the beast, whom would you choose? And I always remember that I was starting to be called on the carpet. I was, I was being accused of being critical to, the, to Catholics and, and that this was, message was too strong, that I was insulting the Roman Catholic Church and that I should hold my lips. But here's the truth of the matter. I'll never forget that as we're putting out these billboards, many things started to happen. One, I would get a call from the local diocese of the Roman Catholic Church wanting to meet with me at, for dinner or for lunch to sit and to talk. And I'll never forget, I was advised by Bob Trevs at the time. He says, don't go to any appointments with them. They just want to get information. So don't go. Mm -hmm. Then I remember as we were putting up more billboards that the Adventist church was very troubled. And I learned that Rome was pressuring them. You know, these billboards, and I, I'm going to prove that because I have in front of me some documentation that is going to prove the way that the Adventist church was being pressured by the Catholic church and what they did to make peace. But Bill, I'll never forget that as the Adventist church was troubled, I was receiving calls from the head elder, the pastor, and they were telling me that I need to take these billboards down. And I said, why? The Lord told me 
to put up these billboards as he asked me to write the Mary book. Mm -hmm. The same voice that asked me to write the Mary book in three million copies in seven languages is the same voice that told me to put up these billboards because the Protestant Reformation, where was it? And Adventism was, was muffled when it came to exposing the beast, you know, and preaching straight on Revelation 13, that I felt very convicted to do this. So, so we put them up, and we put them up. And then I had to be called in, and I was facing disfellowshipment. Now, I was accused of starting a new movement. And they also said I wouldn't follow constituted church authority. But the main issue was always the billboards. The billboards. And they would say, oh, it's because you're running around with these independent ministries, Steps to Life and Prophecy Countdown, and, and, and there was Bob Treffs and his ministry and the printed page and all this. But, you know, Bill, what happened was that I, I, I was called in to a special meeting, and I just want to set the record straight. I love my church. I love my church. But I just want to set the record straight because people heard things about me, but they really never heard the full story. They never heard the truth. So I'm called in to this, it's a disfellowshipment. Mm -hmm. And they told me that, that, um, that I won't follow constituted church, church authority and Don Snyder chaired the meeting. And then he asked if I had anything to say and I said, sure, I do have something to say. And I asked, you know, could you sit down because I, I really want to to, to speak on this subject a minute. And so I stood up and I took the great controversy <clears throat> and I opened up the page, I believe, 99. And it says, about this time, there arrived in Prague two strangers from England, men of learning who had received the light that had come to spread into distant land. And it goes on to say here, in a, pa a place open to the public, they drew two pictures, one representing the entrance of Christ into <laughs> Jerusalem, meek and sitting upon an ass, Matthew 21, 5, and followed by his disciples in travel-worn garments. The other picture portrayed a pontifical procession, the Pope arrayed in rich robes and triple crown, mounted upon a horse magnificently adorned, preceded by trumpeters and followed by cardinals and prelates in dazzling array. Here was a sermon which arrested the attention of all classes and crowds came to gaze upon the drawings. None could fail to read the moral and many were deeply impressed by the contrast between the meekness and humility of Christ, the master, and the pride and the arrogance of the Pope, his professed servant. There was a great commotion in Prague, and the strangers, after a time, found it necessary for their own safety to depart. The pictures made a deep impression on the mind of Huss, John Huss, mm -hmm. and led him to a closer study of Bible and of wife Wycliffe's writings. And what did he do? He had the Bible translated into German. So there was a billboard That's right. that showed Christ and the Pope that led to us, seeing the light that opened up the word of God, okay, in German. And here I was putting up a billboard, trying to reveal the light of God, that people would see that the Pope, according to Bible scripture, was the man of sin, the little horn power, the beast whose deadly wound was healed. And we progress with more billboards and more billboards, but the Adventist church that day, when I was done, and, and in the middle of the sermon, as I was giving it, reading from page 99, a great controversy, a doctor's wife jumps up in the middle of the audience and says, I haven't heard such a powerful message in this church in the past five years. Amen. <laughs> and then they voted, and I was excommunicated from the Seventh-day Adventist church. Danny, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> So, you were overjoyed when you heard the Advent message, especially as, as it was outlined in Daniel and Revelation. It was if, as coming from Christ himself to me. Okay. And so, you, you in your joy of seeing the beauty of, of the prophetic word of Daniel and Revelation, <clears throat> you wanted to share that with as many people as you could. 
And now, now who, <clears throat> Danny, led you? Who do you know led you, number one, to embrace that message, but number two, to want to share it with the world? Who led you to do the that? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit did. And so now, the Holy Spirit leads you to do that, and now you're excommunicated. Now, what spirit, Danny, excommunicated you? Was that the Holy Spirit? <clears throat> you know, Bill, it was so hard I wept. I'm being mm -hmm. severed from the church that I love. They taught me the message, but they didn't like the methodology. I mean, think about it. You go door to door, you pass out great controversies. You send out great controversies to different zip codes. We'd send out the National Sunday Law. You've sent out the secret terrorists. I send out, is the Virgin Mary dead or alive? So you're thinking of ways to evangelize and to, to preach the three angels' message. Amen. But now, rather than knocking on a door and giving the book, you put it on a billboard, and all of a sudden it's getting a lot of attention because there's 100,000 views a day on the highway. Mm -hmm. And they get a call from the Roman Catholic Church and I believe they were pressured. And the reason I say this to you is because I have here something that I've saved many, many years. And there's a picture of the billboard, Saturday the Sabbath, the Lord, Sunday the Mark of the Beast, whom will you choose? Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> this is an article that was published in the magazine, the Catholic magazine, The Tidings. And it says here, it's the oldest published Catholic newspaper in the West Coast of America, founded in 1895. Wow. And it says, according to this letter, Adventists condemn Catholic bashing. So I put up the billboards, and the Adventists are condemning me for Catholic bashing. And here's what it says. The Southern California Conference of Seventh-day Adventists comprising the territory of Los Angeles and Ventura counties on behalf of 149 congregations, I would like to apologize for the billboards that have gone up here in the Los Angeles area caricaturizing Pope John Paul II. Our understanding is that these billboards have been placed by a small group of people whose leader has been disfellowship from our denomination. There was the peace offering. Mm. It was me. Mm. And then it says, this group's methods of mm. seeking public attention. I wanted attention. I wanted the three angels' message to be people to find the light of the three angels' message. Mm. I want to see souls saved in the <coughs> kingdom of heaven. So it says... This group's methods of seeking public attention for its views are in no way harmonious with those of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Furthermore, the group fails to understand the views of the very author whose book it promotes. Then it says, our executive committee has taken an official action against the billboards and the message they convey. Mm. The message they convey is the Sabbath is the Sabbath Saturday's the Sabbath of the Lord. Sunday's the mark of the beast. Isn't that true, Bill, Absolutely. of our message? Absolutely. Is true. it biblical, Bill? Absolutely. As, it's right there in Revelation 14. Danny. It says, please accept my assurance that the seven-day Adventist church will encourage brotherly love towards all. When you read in prophecy of the great whore, the mother of harlots, we have a job to expose that power, don't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Is that hate? It's the greatest message of love that was ever given to humanity, Danny. Multitudes will be deceived and lost for eternity. And our job is to expose the beast mm -hmm. that they don't receive of his mark. And, and mm. I want you to see this. This was written to the editor of the tidings as an apology on behalf of the Southern California Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And then it says up here to the editor, but the editor has a note. 
the following letter was addressed to Cardinal Roger Mahoney. Bill, this gets worse. Roger, Cardinal Roger Mahoney was Bishop Roger Mahoney in Stockton, California, where I grew up. I went to St. Mary's High School. I went to 12 years of Mary's schools. That's why I'm so on fire for the message, because I went to the Roman schools for 12 years, was an altar boy. My family's Roman Catholic Italians. But Cardinal Rod Roger Mahoney was Bishop Roger Mahoney. And I'll never forget the day someone very close to me came to me and told me he had molested her. So the Adventist church of 149 congregations is apologizing to the pedophile mm -hmm. for the billboards that went up exposing the Pope as the Antichrist. And, and I put a note here, and this is from Great Controversy again, 572. Instead of standing in defense of the faith once delivered to the saints, they are now, as it were, apologizing to Rome for their uncharitable opinion of her begging pardon for their bigotry. That's what I've been accused of. Mm -hmm. And then disfellowshipped from the Adventist church. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget after that happened, I was torn. Because they lined up in the church. And they wanted to shake my hand at the end. And I looked at them and I said, brothers and sisters, this isn't a baptism. You just cut me off. And then I asked the question, do you believe that you're the remnant church of Bible prophecy? And they said, yes. I said, so you believe you're the 144,000? And they said, well, we believe we're the true church. And I said, I do too. I believe, you know, out of that, faithful souls constitute the true church, mm -hmm. and faithful souls constitute the church of God. And in that, in, in that remnant, there's a little company of believers. I got that. Mm -hmm. But I believe in it. God has his people, and there's many outside that will join with them, that there will be one body of believers, Absolutely. other sheep not of this fold, that will make up the body of Christ. But I said to them, if you're the true church, then... In order to be part of the body, I must be connected to the head as you. Yes. In order to be part of the body, you must be connected to the head, Jesus Christ. I said, well, you just severed me from the body. Mm -hmm. So then I'm not connected to the head? So I'm lost? You're an infidel. I'm an infidel. I've been cast, my name's been cast out at evil. And so I leave and say, but I'm still Saved and in good graces with the Lord when you have just severed me and cast my name out as evil? You know, I'll never forget. It was a hard time for me. Mm -hmm. Very, it hurt sure because it I love my church. I love mm -hmm. this message. You know, I, 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 I proclaim the truth in defense of the faith once delivered to the saints. But I'll never forget after this happened, I got a phone call from Jan Markison. Mm. who wrote the National Sunday Law. And Jan Markison said to me, I called to congratulate you. And I was puzzled. I said, I just got excommunicated. <laughs> I got kicked out. It was a public hearing in front of 200 people, I believe. And they cast my name out as evil. And you're calling to congratulate me? He said, yes, I am. Because you have been blessed with honors I have not yet been blessed with. And he said, go to Luke chapter 6 and read with me. And here's what it says in verse 22, Luke 6, 22. Mm. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy Behold, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Mm -hmm. That's why he was saying that I just wanted to say, congratulations, you've been blessed with honors in heaven that I have not yet been blessed with. And Bill, I'm not saying that thinking I'm some special person, I'm a prophet. Mm -hmm. You know, it hurt. 
course it did. And it hurts when I see spiritual formation. And it hurts when I see B.B. Beach go to the Pope and give him a medal that says, keep the Sabbath day holy. It hurts when I hear about the Eucharist, when people are coming forward to receive communion as you would in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. When I see the, the ecumenical influence within our, my own denomination, when I see the three angels' message watered down, as you quoted, the last deception of Satan will be to make the spirit of prophecy a non effect in the church. This is going to be hate literature. Absolutely. But Bill, I want you to, to interject something right now. Because I love this book and you love this book. And you have a magazine right there that mm -hmm. I want you to hold up and show the camera. Sure. This is a magazine, and tell a little bit about it and what's on the cover here. The name of the magazine, Danny, is The Literature Evangelist. It has a host of leaders in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I recognize Ted Wilson. Ted Wilson is yeah. up there, and there, <clears throat> there's a tower of books that are stacked up in the shape of a tower, and the book is The Great Controversy, the one you've been quoting from. Yes. And... They're praying, Danny, over these great controversies because they were launching a project for this book, The Great Controversy, to go around the world. Now, isn't this the book for the hour? Oh, well, absolutely. And Ellen White it, says this is the book that needs to get out. Absolutely it is, Danny. In fact, at the bottom of the magazine, it quotes from Cole Porter Ministry, page 127. And it says, the great controversy should be very widely circulated. It contains the story of the past, the present, and the future. I am more anxious to see a wide circulation for this book than for any others I have written. For in the great controversy, the last message of warning to the world is given more distinctly than in any of my other books. Mm. So Danny... Definitely. That book right there, nearly a 700-page book, The Great Controversy, is the one Ellen White talked about yeah. and said we need to share with the whole world. And so this magazine cover gives the impression that the brethren in the general conference are praying over the circulation of this 700-page volume. Now, if my memory... <laughs> is correct. I was at an ASI meeting in Sacramento years ago. I think it was there that I heard Elder Wilson get up and talk about raising millions of dollars because they want to mass distribute the great controversy. That's what I believe I heard. Mm -hmm. so, so what happened? Well, what happened, Danny, is, is that once the money <clears throat> came in, the book that was actually circulated was not the nearly 700-page masterpiece of Ellen White's, but it was a watered-down, devotional, great controversy called The Great Hope. Now, this book, Danny, is about 90 pages long. This book that the General Conference used millions of dollars that were given for the circulation of The Great Controversy it was actually put into this book. Now, Danny, for anybody that's read this book, as I have, there is nothing in here about the great reformers. There's nothing about Huss, Jerome, Wycliffe, the Walden Seas, Martin Luther, uh, the English reformers, the French reformers. There's nothing, Danny, in this book about the papal power being the Antichrist. No. Nothing. I've, Nothing. I've read Danny. parts of this book. I no, have not seen it either. Nothing, Danny, in this book. This takes the devotional elements that are in the great controversy mm. and puts them into this book, which, Danny, if anybody from any denomination read this book here, they would hear none of the distinctive truths for this time. There's nothing in here about the investigative judgment and the sanctuary. It's not there, Danny. The three angels' messages. It's not there. So it doesn't expose the Antichrist? Not at all. The Roman Catholic Church? Not at all. The mark of the beast? The, the change of the Sabbath? No. 
I've heard this book referred to as the great hoax. That's what I refer to it as, Danny, yes, the great hoax. Danny, this, this project, as you can see from this magazine, it gives a faithful Seventh-day Adventist the idea that the General Conference brethren are seeking to promote the nearly 700-page masterpiece that Ellen White said needed to be given to the world. And this is the result. Hmm. This is the result. Now, Danny, I look at that. <clears throat> I look at this. I look at the article you read about the billboards, and you were accused of Catholic bashing. Right. Danny, this book, this book does not say anything about the papacy as the Antichrist power. So the question I have to ask myself is, who is behind this idea that exposing the papal power as the man of sin, that that's Catholic bashing? Exactly. Who's behind that? Exactly. Who is behind, Danny, the promulgation of the great hoax? Good question, Bill. Who is behind that? It obviously is not the Lord. You know, I've, thought, the Lord. I've thought about this. When you look at ancient Israel, you know, how they could go into idolatry. I mean, the most horrible idolatry. That as I look to the church of the last days today, woman's ordination. I mean, let's just say the world church just voted against woman's ordination. And I get the recorder in my own, you know, area here in Lodi, California. And here it is, an open statement that they will continue to proceed for woman's ordination. Mm -hmm. This is insubordination. Mm -hmm. So you have a church that's divided against itself right now. And so this isn't telling anybody to leave our church. What I'm trying to tell people right now is to stand up for the truth. Amen. Stand up for the Amen, truth. Amen, Danny. Amen. Preach the message that God gave you. You know, I, I was sitting there looking through my files, and it was talking about 11th hour workers, where people will come from different places, even the Roman Catholic communion or Catholic church, and they will stand up and give the trumpet a certain sound that Amen, God Danny. would bypass those that stood in rank and leadership and go to the common people as he went to the fishermen of old, mm -hmm. because God is going to have his message go through. You know, and it really hurt because I'm putting up scripture on the man of sin. I'm putting up revelation verses on the dragon, gave him his power seat, his great authority. You know, these, these quotes from the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel, prophetic and, and Thessalonians on the man of sin being revealed. I'm quoting scripture and I'm attacked for bigotry against the Roman Catholic Church. So, so we're talking about Jesuit influence in the Adventist church. Bill, do you think there's today, if there was in the day of Froome, questions on doctrine in the video that I made on the part one of Jesuits in the SDA church, that, that they said, wait till Ellen White dies before we start putting the Jesuits into the organization because she was smelling them out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where are we today? Danny, I don't, I don't think there's any question of the influence and the power that the Jesuit order and the Catholic Church have within Seventh-day Adventism. Because, Danny, the agenda that we see across the board in the Seventh-day Adventist Church today, Danny, it's not, it's not the message that was given to it's Ellen not. White. It's not. <clears throat> Danny, we have, as we've mentioned already, we have spiritual formation. We have a watering down where we don't hear who the Antichrist is anymore. We have the promotion of the great hoax that completely guts the Advent message. We have, we have spiritual formation. We have Project One. We have the emerging church. We have spiritualism right in the heart of Seventh-day Adventism, Dan. Bill, I'm going to ask you a question because we've talked about this. Samuel Bakayoki. Mm. I mm. expose him as a Jesuit infiltrator in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And, and, you know, no disrespect, 
But after I went public and did that, two weeks later, he died of liver cancer. But when you and I were talking on the phone, what was going on with his theology? Where was he leading as the Pied Piper, many Seventh-day Adventists? What road was he taking them down on the identifying marks of the papacy? And he was putting it on the Muslims. Danny, Samuel Bakioki was using a technique that the Jesuits have used in Protestant churches for centuries. This is what Bakioki did. The Seventh-day Adventists, Danny, from our inception, have always believed that the little horn of Daniel 7 and the first beast of Revelation 13, 1 to 10, is the papal power. Samuel Bakioki, Danny, in Jesuit style, he came along and he said, yes, the characteristics of the little horn and of the first beast of Revelation 13, yes, that represents the papacy. But, he said, it also represents Islam. <clears throat> what Bakioki is doing, he's saying, okay, you have your old belief, but there's also a new belief that's also equally inspired, equally right. Now, Danny, what happens is over time, the old belief there you go. disappears and the mm -hmm. new belief becomes the norm. Heck. And that's, that's what Samuel Bakioki was doing. And Danny, we're seeing this happening in different areas within mm -hmm. the denomination. There were statements made, there was one statement made by a prominent leader in, in the Adventist church where he stated that the mark of the beast was any other day of the week mm. but the seventh day <clears throat> Sabbath. Now, Danny, I look at that statement and I say, now, wait a minute. Where did that statement come from? Hmm. Did, the, did the leader quote from the great controversy? Where did he get that, that idea? That destroys the whole history of the <clears throat> Catholic Church transferring the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. It's the day of the sun. It's Ezekiel <coughs> chapter 8. I mean, Absolutely. it didn't say Wednesday. Absolutely, Danny. It's the day of the sun, the venerable day of the sun. They, had, they were worshiping the sun. So where, do, where does that come from, Danny? Where, it doesn't come from this, the masterpiece of the great controversy. Well, so, that's, you know, that's why I was saying, is it because they're insubordinate? Is it because the Holy Spirit is withdrawing from some of the men? Is it because that they're Laodicea and they're poor, blind, wretched, miserable, and naked? yet they knoweth not their true condition. But, you know, I want to throw something out, and it's pretty strong. But I really have had to process this myself. If you were to go back to the time of the Jewish nation, this was God's nation. This was his chosen people. And you, you looked at how the Jewish nation and Rome we're working together. Absolutely. I mean, you look at Caiaphas, you know, you look at Pilate, you know, and you, you, you see the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That here was the chosen people of God that were so blinded that they were yelling, crucify him, mm -hmm. crucify. And, and, and I'm saying that if we're repeating the way of the past and we're doing the same as the Jewish nation, how far? can it go when you embrace spiritual formation? Now listen to me. I'm talking about those that are following the ways of Rome. Mm -hmm. Those that aren't standing for the truth. I'm not talking about the faithful souls within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We all know there's going to be a great shaking, mm -hmm. a straight testimony, and they're going to rise up against that straight testimony, and this will cause a shaking of the of the people. And in volume five of the testimony, when you read the chapter on the seal of God, it goes to Ezekiel and talks about the man with the rider's inkhorn. Mm -hmm. And he's going in to slay, and he says, begin where? At the sanctuary. In my sanctuary. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill, when I look at that, Ellen White says that pride, avarice, deception of every kind is not just in the world, it's in the church. And the ancient men, the dumb dogs, will never lift up their voice again to sound the warning. You know, and, and you know, 
There was a day where I was preaching and speaking and warning and, and, and I was attacked for holding out the dirty laundry in the church. They can watch this video here and say, he's holding out the dirty laundry of the mm. church. Mm. I am not trying to hold out the dirty laundry of the church. Amen. I'm trying to appeal to you. Be a seventh day Adventist, stand for what is true. Defend the faith that delivered to the saints. Stand for the spirit of prophecy. Preach the three angels' message. Amen. Preach righteousness by faith and verity. Teach about character perfection and overcoming all sin by the power of God and be a partaker of the divine nature. I love the Seventh-day Adventist church, and I want to stand for what is true in the Seventh-day Adventist church. And our job is to preach the three angels' message. Amen. You can't preach the three angels' message if you're not willing to accept Rose, Rome. Amen. Amen, Danny. Danny, there's, there's been a trend. There's been a trend within Seventh-day Adventism for 70 years. From the time of questions on doctrine, all the way through the 60s, the 70s, with the changing of the logo. Yeah. We used to have a logo of three angels flying in the midst of heaven, blowing trumpets. But Danny, after the uh, meeting in Lima, Peru in 1982 with the BEM document, the Seventh-day Adventist denomination, they changed their logo. It was no longer the three angels. Then it became the three wavy lines. And Danny, if you look at the three wavy lines on the current logo, you compare them to the three wavy lines on the BEM document, Danny, they're, they're virtually identical. And those three wavy lines, Danny, represent the fact that the Seventh-day Adventist denomination has said we are now a part of the great ecumenical movement mm -hmm. toward a one-world church. Oh, they don't even, not everyone realizes this. How oh, can this sure, ever be? Danny. But you know, know, Bill, if you really study the prophecy, you know, I studied the spirit of prophecy, and, and I, I want to know what's going to happen when the majority forsake us, when champions yeah. are few. Mm -hmm. This will be our test. Mm -hmm. You know, that the men in the open air, the ministers, will be urging upon the people the first day of the week. Yes, sir. They're hauling down, you know, the banner for which we stand, seven day Adventists, you mm -hmm. know, and things are changing. <laughs> and and. You know, I'm alarmed because it's been a gradual change over all these years. Mm -hmm. And I remember years ago that, that the celebration movement was coming in. Remember that time? Absolutely. And there was, um, what was it? Not spiritual formation, but NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Mm -hmm. And I remember in that day we were speaking up, but it's nothing like what we're seeing today. It's all, it only gets worse, Danny. It only gets worse. And the, the, the thing, Danny, it's, it's you know, this, the great controversy. We have the great hoax. It's this watering down, Danny, and it's not just in prophetic <clears throat> interpretation. It's in, it's in diet. It's in dress. Yeah. It's in, you know, jewelry. It's, it's in every Music. standard. Yeah, in every standard we've been given as a people. You know, I want to digress a minute into <clears throat> something else. Because every wind of doctrine will be blowing. And it is. And I just recently took a stand this June 2015 at the Lodi Grape Festival. Mm. I gave a presentation there. And my alarm is that Seventh-day Adventists are buying in to the theology and the prophecy and the predictions that are being made by evangelicals, Jonathan Kahn, John mm -hmm. Hagee. And this, it came in like a whirlwind on the, the Shemitah, you know, the seven year rest that God required for the land, that it was called the Shemitah. And, and the Shemitah, they were giving this, that we are gonna see judgments upon the United States and a financial collapse, and they're setting dates. It was, I think, September 13th, and then they're setting another date for September 23rd, and then the blood moons. And Adventists were running to the Shemitah and the blood moons and proclaiming it, and people are out there, we gotta get out now, we gotta secure property now, it's the deadline, Jade Helm, 
this was going to be the army surrounding Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the soldiers. And I went public. And I said, wrong. Mm -hmm. And you know what? None of it happened. None of it happened. Mm -hmm. And so I'm fearful for our people that as the pastors and the leaders that aren't preaching pure, unadulterated, Seventh-day Adventist truths, Bible truths, they're going to be sitting ducks. Danny, our only defense, it's like what Jehoshaphat was told in 2 Chronicles 20. It said, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Danny, when we set aside the great controversy <coughs> and the writings of Ellen White, Danny, we're a sitting duck for any wind of doctrine that's blowing. Jonathan Kahn, John Hagee, the Shemitah, time moves. setting, the time blood setting. moves. That's what it was. Danny. Even with all the spirit of prophecy statements, time setting, and it had churches who were getting worked up and Adventists were, it was like, what? What's happened to you? Why are you buying into this? Because it looks so sensational. And I studied out sensationalism and time setting, and it was getting real close to me. And I had to take a stand. Mm -hmm. And at times it felt like I was a loner. You know, I was standing by myself because many people around me, friends, they were getting into this stuff, Bill. But, you know, I just want to say again that, that I think that there's been an influence definitely at the headquarters of our faith. No question. I believe things are watered down. But the Jesuits, I mean, I've, I've received, I'm sure you have too, but very strong letters. I've had a Jesuit come into my store. I've had one rip the Bible out of my hand, told me he, he, he wrote pornography for a living. And, and, I, and I finally, he rips the Bible out of my hand, you know, and in our conversation, he, he lost it for a moment and he'd gone to Jesuit schools, you know. And then another man was following me around once, and, and I went up to him. He had gone to Jesuit schools. Mm. You know, and I'm saying, who are these people? I was driving once with Dan Collins. Remember, he used to be with... My son, Dan. Dan Collins was with Joe Cruz in Amazing Facts, and we were on the highway. He says, with what you've put out and the work that you've done and what you have exposed and the billboards and the merry books, I need to teach you how to check just in case you're being followed. Hmm. And he's saying, look in your rearview mirror more often and take turns, get off the road, take a turn here or there just to see if anybody's following you. Hmm. And I believe that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver Amen. them. And I believe God Amen. protects you and God will protect me. But you know what? We need to be awake because we have been called to do a work to expose the man of sin and you know what that means, Bill? That means Francis. Absolutely, Danny. This Francis that's going everywhere, that people are hailing him like it's Christ himself on the earth. We have been ex called to expose Francis, his 1.2 billion member church organization. And it's not against Catholics, please. I love Catholic people. This of is about course. a system. Of Always course. remember that. But you know what I'm saying, Bill? You're going to have spiritualism. You're going to have the Virgin Mary appearing. That's a demon. A demon impersonating the Virgin Mary. Order my book, Is the Virgin Mary Dead or Alive? And read for yourself. We have spiritualism coming now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This world's in a mess. And God's church, enfeebled and defective as it is, is the apple of his eye. We need to stand up. And, and, and sound the message while we yet can. You know, Danny, I really appreciate, I really appreciate what you're saying, that this, this talk here today, it's not, it's not about exposing dirty laundry. No, it's, it's not a, where it's, my heart is. It's, it's about saying we have a message that is going through. We have a message that will carry us to the sea of glass. And, and as, 
as we see people just dragging it in the dirt and throwing it away. Amen. True Seventh-day Adventists need to rise. They need to stand Amen. for what they know is true. They've got to stand for what they believe, Danny. And that's what this message is all about. Now, I've got a question for you. Yeah. You mentioned about the mm. demon Mary mm. appearing right before our eyes. Danny, what about, I have people ask me this all the time. They say, well, we have people that worship on Friday, Muslims. We have Jews that worship on Sunday. We have evangelicals on Sunday. We have pagans that honor all kinds of days. So, Danny, you and I have talked about the fact that there will be a dividing line over the Sabbath versus Sunday. Danny, Tie it together for us. How, how will you get Friday worshipers, pagan worshipers, <laughs> how will they all be come together to honor Sunday? Well, I, How do you think that will happen? Well, you know, when I write in the Mary book that I see when Satan impersonates Christ, when you have these demons impersonating the apostles, when you got the Virgin Mary appearing and it's not, it's, it's a demon. The world is going to be so amazed by the signs and wonders mm. that are in the skies that are taking place, raising the dead, apparently raising the dead, mm. that they can tell the world whatever they want and the world's going to fall suit. I believe, and I've asked this to Muslims, if the Virgin Mary appeared right now, what would you do? He says, I'd hit the dirt and worship. Mm -hmm. And as she says, let's keep Sunday holy. And Satan comes as Christ and says, I changed the day mm -hmm. in honor of my resurrection. I believe when you see supernatural events of this magnitude, if the world can believe, if you can sway the world now to believe what you want them to believe through the media, what do you think is going to happen when somebody's floating in the sky and telling you that Sunday's sacred? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I see that false Christ with the, the Pope mm -hmm. and Mary. Mm -hmm. This is my mother and the Pope. This is my man. Mm -hmm. And there's Sunday sacredness, you know. Mm -hmm. But I want to read you something in closing. Sure. Something encouraging. Good. Because I believe the latter rain hasn't poured out yet, by the way. I believe it's going to be poured out greater Absolutely. than Pentecost. Absolutely. Greater than. And the great outpouring has not happened, Bill. But when it does, the message will be carried not so much by argument as by the deep conviction of the Spirit of God. Hmm. The arguments have been presented. The seed has been sown, and now it will spring up and bear fruit. The publications distributed by missionary workers have exerted their influence, yet many whose minds were impressed have been prevented from fully comprehending the truth or from yielding obedience. Now the rays of light penetrate everywhere. The truth is seen in its clearness, and the honest children of God sever the bands which have held them. Family connections. Church relations are powerless to stay them now. Truth is more precious than all besides, notwithstanding the agencies combined against the truth. A large number take their stand on the Lord's side. That's thousands are converted in a day. Amen. Because this message, <laughs> when that fourth angel joins with the third angel, three angels, and, and, and that three angels message has the power of the latter rain. Amen. The Lord is meeting the crisis, and the Lord wins Amen. in the end. Amen. So, you know, Danny. Bill, let's always stand for what's true and what's right. Amen, Danny. And Amen. proclaim this message Amen. so long as we breathe. What Amen, do you say? Danny. Amen. Amen. And how about you, beloved? Will you proclaim this message? Will you take your stand as a faithful seven-day Adventist? How's your first love? Has it grown cold? Accept again the preferred love of Christ. Amen. Talk of his love. Teach it to your children. Get out your Bibles and begin to study like you've never studied before. Putting scripture to memorization. 
because I believe that God has a people and I just want to be prepared physically and spiritually for what's ready to happen upon this earth. And I urge you to do the same thing while you have time. God bless you and thank you for being with us this evening.